I always, I always ask my young guys. I go, hey man, I mean, who wants to be an ordinary baseball player here? Amen. That means you got to be an extraordinary baseball player. You got to do the extra mm-hmm. ordinary thing. Podcast fans, what's happening? Welcome back to another episode of the Impact Show. Todd Durkin here, your host, and we are joined today by world-renowned nutritionist Robert Yang. Robert, what's happening? What's up, TD? How are you? You are just the guy I wanted to see as uh, we are getting ready to amp up 2020. Uh, I want to talk hormones today. I want to talk gut health. I want to talk nutrition. Uh, and I am so fired up for today. I hope you're ready for your A-game. You, oh, you're yeah. going to bring it today? I'm going to bring it today, man. Guys, if you don't know... I got you. I'm with TD. If you don't know Robert Yang, <laughs> check this out. Robert has a master's degree in human nutrition. He's a certified nutritionist. He's a strength conditioning specialist, a check four level four practi- uh, practitioner, an advisory board member with Titleist Performance Institute. So am I. We share that same That's commonality. Right. He specializes in nutrition, sports performance, performance, and lifestyle coaching, his integrative and individualized programs have helped athletes individual and individuals improve, improve performance, prevent injuries, and improve health and vitality. His book, Hole-in-One Nutrition, A Guide to Fueling Better Golf, is not only a great book for golfers. It's a great book for everybody, by the way. Congratulations Thank on you. the book. Appreciate it that. is awesome. Uh, where can one get this? Amazon? Amazon. Amazon. Yep. Check it out. Uh, and guys... It is so awesome to have Robert and his wife in the house today. Uh, the Yang household is in in here at Fitness Quest 10. We are live in studio with the podcast. And I'm just going right after it because I need some help with nutrition. <laughs> I get asked so many questions on nutrition. I love nutrition. But you are the expert when it comes to nutrition. And I'm starting off with sugar. Sugar. Yeah. S-U-G-A. Sugar. That's right. I always say it's the devil. Sugar's <laughs> the devil. It's the, it's the demise of man and woman. How the heck... Do you, you curb all these sugar cravings that are going around right now? Sugar. Talk about sugar, please. I know. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Yeah. Uh, it's just one of those topics, you know, it's, you know, they say it's most, more addictive than cocaine, right? They've done studies with rats and they give cocaine and sugar and the rats end up shooting, picking sugar, hands wow. down, wow. you know? So it's everywhere, but you want to, it's not, you know, I don't. Expect someone that's going to eat perfectly all the time. So mm-hmm. you're going to have sugar, but you also want to try to minimize it as well. So one of the key things, and I'll keep talking about all the time, is blood sugar control. And mm-hmm. so ultimately, most people, they end up craving sugar because they're not controlling their blood sugar from the get-go. Okay. So I've always said your BFF, your best friend forever, for controlling blood sugar is PFF, protein fats and fiber Hmm. and all all those macronutrients individually on their own help to control blood sugar so protein on its own basically if you look at blood glucose in the blood it's pretty much flat line fat same thing Uh, fiber as well so when you combine all three you get a synergistic effect you get a one plus one equals three effect when Hmm. it comes to blood sugar control okay so oftentimes if you can do that throughout the day, then the cravings for sugar go down. Okay. And so people go, hey, man, I, you know, I always want that cookie after dinner. And yes. noticing, man, I don't, I don't really want that cookie. I'm, I'm actually satisfied. Hmm. So it really comes down to controlling the blood sugar from the time that you get up. That's key. Okay. We're going to talk about that today. Yeah. I want to talk about this BFF and the PFF. That's right. We're going to need a little PFF. I'm telling you, man. We, 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 we're going to need a little <laughs> talk about the PFF because uh, sugar – it, it certainly is is something I think that most of my clients, probably most of your clients as well, uh, struggle with. As a matter of fact, so you guys all know, in full disclosure, I've actually worked with Robert now for, jeez, 10 plus years. Uh, not only have I presented with Robert on the Perform Better Tour, I actually uh, went to get my own coaching from Robert many years ago because Robert does a lot of uh, uh, testing. Uh, right. Talk about that, that, that process of what some of your – athletes some of the athletes i work with and that we share yeah. together what are what are a couple of things that we have done yeah to actually so robert can say green yellow or red food what, what, what is that <laughs> what is that what is that test like there's real real brief that's right so anytime i can i'm going to collect something out of my athlete or one of my clients so it could be am i the athlete you're the athlete Perfect. you're the athlete okay good td's good. the athlete all right but we're i'm going to collect stool possibly um, saliva, mm-hmm. blood. That way, 
I know what's going on, mm-hmm. what I need to address. So whether it's possibly they've got a pathogen overgrowth or they've got uh, inflammation in the gut, then we need to take care of it. Mm-hmm. Or whether they're like, hey, man, I don't know what's going on, but I'm waking up every morning like I have a cold, but I don't have a cold. Yep. You know, they're blowing snot, they're blowing their nose, they're constantly, <clears throat> you know, clearing their throat. And I go, well, something's going on. So then we might test for food sensitivities. So really it depends on the individual. But in general, I would say probably 80% of the time we're usually doing some kind of blood work, figuring out some food sensitivities, figure if they have leaky gut, which we can talk about later, um, as well as looking leaky at stool. Yeah. So we got to, you know, so basically, you know. I think if, I did urine, saliva. That's right. And stool. And stool. That's right. I know you're like, stool? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you want to get better, you'll do that too. That's right. <laughs> like you'll do whatever it takes. That, that's the fun stuff. Well, <laughs> we, won't, we won't describe necessarily that process right. today. But uh, I, although Robert is based in San Diego, you work with people from all over the world, correct? Correct. So sometimes it gets tricky when it's international. Mm. You know, we can do Sending some. Stool yeah, across so, the, yeah, know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Depends on the country and, you know, DHL or UPS, whatever, but normally within the states, not a problem. Yeah. Um, so we basically either we'll send them to a lab to get their blood drawn, or we'll send them mm-hmm. a stool kit, lava kit, yeah. urine kit, and they okay. collect in the privacy of their own home, and then they send that to the lab, and we get back on Skype or FaceTime, mm-hmm. and then we get go at it and get the. Well, I know a lot of my it. clients and athletes, the, some of the world's best athletes, have relied on you for that edge as well. And um, I value what you bring to the table. And I want today's episode to go deep on some of the topics that not just athletes, but some of our weekend warriors, fitness enthusiasts, people who are struggling with their health right. uh, can get some great content out of today and for information. And it's up to you to do to, you know, what you're going to do with that. Um, before we jump into like I want to talk about hormones today and gut health, I got to ask a question that's personal for me. It's personal for me. And my wife, Melanie, said, you got to ask Robert this. Um I want to talk about coffee. 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 I knew that Just was co- possibly wanna, coming. <laughs> is it is coffee good or is coffee bad? And don't and don't give me a fifty fifty. Like, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Well, you know what? It's interesting that you ask that because I'm very much a coffee lover. So I'm I'm very particular. So when you come to my house, TD, <laughs> I'll make you a good good cup of coffee. Why is it? Well, you well you'll be like, oh, I can't go back to regular <laughs> coffee after this. Why is it good? So the thing is, I just to give you a little backstory, I used to really be adamant against coffee hmm. just because of some of the research I, I read. But then more research is coming out, right? So they're saying, oh, coffee's good for type 2 diabetes or it's good for this and that. And really what it comes down to is I tell people, look, if you're thriving on coffee, awesome, great. If you're surviving on coffee, we're having an issue. And what I mean by surviving is I mean people that – have to have two to three cups of coffee. Like they cannot make it throughout the day. That's okay. a problem. That's okay. when they're surviving on coffee. Whereas, you know, you have a cup of coffee, you get to your books, you get to your reading, you get to your typing, articles, whatever, and you're focused and concentrate. That's a good thing. That means you're thriving on coffee. Usually what it is, it's it's a bell curve. Okay. So usually it's around two to maybe four cups of coffee, depending on the person. Um, is where people get the benefits from. Anytime you pass that threshold, then people either get, they get side effects or they tax their adrenal glands too much over a period of time. So we could talk about adrenal gland, but I'll stick with this coffee. Right. So you recommend I have coffee. I should, I should. You should have coffee (laughs) provided that you drink water first. Ooh. So that's the key thing. So that's why I'm always a big advocate that you've got to drink 25% 25% of your total water take first thing before you have coffee. Okay. Like right when you get up, you should be 25%. chugging. 25%. Yeah. So wow. to do the math, let's say you have a 200-pound player or 200-pound person, 100 ounces should be consumed daily, right? And then basic 25% of that, so 25 ounces, you consume first thing in the morning. Hmm. Got it. Okay. That way, my, you hydrate properly, and then you enjoy your my, coffee. My, my wife is smiling right now as she's listening into this podcast, I'm sure, because Good. we, I, I have a, I, the reason I asked and saw this is I have a very, very strange relationship with coffee. I actually like coffee. Yeah. But I don't do it very much because oh, okay. I, it controls me. Ah. We'll see I, I feel like, when, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like I, I like it so much, but I'm like, I don't want that thing to control how I feel. Right, right. So- 
like I'll have it for a few days and then I'll go cold turkey for months. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I'm always like, hey, have this fresh Kona cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. smells so good. Right. And I'm, I'm like, that coffee's not going to control me. But yeah. then I have it, and it's like, oh, that's good. She's like, well, you ask Robert Yang today on the podcast, <laughs> what do you think about pot, about about the coffee? And I had to ask, so it sounds like yeah. I should be enjoying my coffee. Enjoying your coffee, because there's other things. There are antioxidants in it. Okay. You've got chlorogenic acid. Uh, those kind of things are beneficial. Now, for example, when we talk about genetics, when we talk about it's, it's called SNPs, which is single nucleotide polymorphisms. And so that's where all the genetic testing is coming into play. And people are going, okay, well, my genetics says this. Well, when it comes to caffeine metabolism, there's what we call CYPA12. Basically, what it's, it's a SNP. And basically, you, have, you can determine whether you're a slow or a fast metabolizer of caffeine. Okay. So you don't really need to do the genetic testing. You just know the people that they drink three, four cups of coffee, they can have one after dinner and they go to bed. Mm. That's a fast Can't metabolizer. Yeah, yeah, I can't right. do that. Now you have a slow metabolizer. They drink caffeine or coffee past 11. They can't go to bed. Either. Okay. So, so with all that our, type of person, you do have to be careful with the amount of coffee, which is important. So all of our coffee lovers right now are spawning, and they are oh, loving yeah. you right now. That's loving right. you. As a matter of fact, it's probably 99% of the people listening in right now are coffee lovers. Yeah. So I had to reveal that. I have never shared my weird relationship with coffee yeah. before. But I think it all started with Jack Elaine. Jack Elaine didn't drink coffee. So I'm like, mm. if Jack didn't do it, I'm not doing it either. Yeah, 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 but yeah. now you're telling me, Robert Yang's telling me on the other side, <laughs> is I got to have coffee. So my wife is going to be making me some coffee, I'm sure, and saying, well, Robert says you should drink it. So anyway, it's my own issue I got to deal with. But, no, but it, you know, I just tell people, look, if, if, you, if you are abusing it and you're like, you know, I cannot survive the day without it, then we got to look at some other issues. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Now let's get to the the the, the, the guts of, the guts of this. Pardon the pun. That's right. Uh, but I had to clear up the sugar and and the coffee thing. I want to talk about inflammation. Mm. Uh, it's a hot topic. It comes up with our athletes all the time. It comes up with my clients all the time. Um, inflammation is something that is is part of our bodies. This training and everything else. Right. Talk about inflammation and. Are there foods we should avoid? Um, are there food, foods we should have to fortify against inflammation? Can you talk about that? I know it's a hot topic in, in, in nutrition now. I know I've heard you um, on your social media and, and how you get all your content out, talk about it. But inflammation, right. what do you have to share about that? Well, inflammation, as you know, you brought up, it's just a natural process, right? Like you train, you're tearing down muscle tissue, connective tissue. It has to happen in order for you to build back up the mus muscle tissue for muscle gain or hypertrophy. Well, with inflammation, just like you sprain your ankle, it's a natural process. So acute inflammation is not such a problem. What we're looking at is more chronic inflammation that occurs over a period of time. And so for me, and like I told you briefly, I'm, I'm writing my second book, and one of the things that we want to try to get a hold of and, and control favorably for an athlete is inflammation. Mm. And so there's what I call the performance triad. And that's including gut, hormones, and sleep. Hmm. So they all can stand on their, lo on their own, but they also affect each other. So if you follow me real quick, for example, with if we just look at the gut, for example. With the gut, we know that if you have leaky gut, which is no longer a sort of theory, it's proven. There's, there's proof that it does happen. Now, it's not a bad thing, but if it happens all the time, it's a problem because... Uh, think of the, the what intestinal is that? leaky so, gut. Yeah. So basically, what it is is that you have the small intestine lining of it, and so if you took a snippet of it and you looked at it underneath a microscope, you would have these tight junctions. So you can, if you can, obviously people are going to be listening to this on audio. So if you can visualize, you know, let's say there's riot police, right? So there's rioters and they call it the riot police, and they're all jammed together, close and tight, and their job is to not let the rioters come through. And that's sort of like the small intestinal lining. Their job is to keep tight and not let anything get through. Mm. Um, now, the importance of that is that potentially behind that line if, or the riders are, could be anything from food you eat. It could be chemicals. It could be you know, estrogens. It could be pathogens like bacteria, yeast, viruses, you name it. But they're not supposed to be in the bloodstream. That's for the digestive system to sort of monitor and take care of the immune system. But if it keeps getting through the, the – if the riot police – end up getting a hole and they open up, that's like a VIP entrance for anything to get through the bloodstream. And that's a, boom, automatic inflammatory response. Hmm. That shouldn't be happening on a normal basis. 
How would someone know that that's happening? Well, one of the things is like you get some of the athletes, like some of the guys you send me sometimes and other people I see is that they're doing all the right things. They're training well. They're sleeping well. They're not sure about their eating, but they're constantly getting injured. Hmm. Their elbows getting inflamed. or their shoulders getting inflamed. They're getting a proper therapy. They're getting acupuncture, massage, everything, but still they're getting the, the nagging little injuries. So hmm. those are the things that I see uh, with some of the guys with an inflammatory process. Are and there then, symptoms that would appear yeah, for a non-athlete? Right. So it, it could be like because it's more digestive-based, we're talking right. about this this part of the performance triad, mm -hmm. it could be little things like they just get bloating and they get gas all the time. You know, guys are notorious for clearing out a room, right? Farting and like, you know, they have a good laugh at it. But if it's so constantly... excessive whey protein. Right. So it could <laughs> not, it may, it may not be excessive. It may be part of the problem, right? Mm. Um, there could be other issues like bloating. Um, mm. Some of the women I work with, they complain of bloating all the time. They feel like, they look and feel like they're five months pregnant, literally. Mm. They have this distension going on. And that is not good because mm. from a physical perspective, we know if you're bloated all the time, you cannot recruit your abdominal wall the way you should. Mm -hmm. From a performance aspect, as well as a prehab rehab aspect. Mm. So that's where you know the gut can go really, really far in that process of inflammation. And then just sleep in general. If you don't sleep enough, you raise what we call interleukin-6. And that's a cytokine that's produced in times of inflammation. But because you don't sleep enough, that guy keeps circulating around where it shouldn't be. And then you promote more inflammation if there is excess inflammation in the knee joint, the shoulder joint, the neck, lumbar spine, you name it. When you say not sleep enough, are you into the – how much you sleep or the quality of sleep? Both. Okay. It's got to be both. Okay. So you can sleep for nine hours, but if you're waking up three or four times a night to go quote unquote pee, that's not normal. Mm. Um, people say, oh, well, I have to go pee. Well, I got news for you. Your bladder, your body's completely intentionally designed so that when you go to bed, the bladder size increases so you can hold more pee, more mm -hmm. urine, and then you can unload it in the morning. But most people, they mistakenly wake up and they go, oh, I'm up. Oh, I must need to go pee. So if there's two or three things that you could recommend for someone that is not sleeping, they're exercising during the day, mm -hmm. they're tired, but then they don't sleep well. Yeah. Would, be there, would there be two or three things that you would say, hey, try this, mm -hmm. it may help, whether it be nutritionally or other, other habits that you've learned? Yeah, I mean, that's when it comes down to sleep hygiene, right? So what are they doing two hours before they go to bed? Mm -hmm. So we got those devices, right? They're handy, they're cool, but they also stimulate light. That's like right. before it was TV, right? That's right. Then it was computers, and then we got the laptops or iPads and, and phones all the time. The problem with that is that you're telling the brain that it's 6 o'clock in the morning mm. because when light ends up hitting your retina, it goes to what we call the SCN, suprachiasmatic nuclei. Long story short, it just basically tells your brain, hey, sun is up. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. Produce cortisol. That's when cortisol should be at its lowest point. Mm -hmm. But then because it's higher than normal, melatonin gets suppressed. Mm -hmm. And then people wonder why, oh, I can't go to bed. Obviously, you have, if they're checking emails and they're stressed out from their boss or whatever, that's part of the factor too. So you shouldn't but check emails, Instagram, right before you go to sleep. Like right before you go to sleep, you shouldn't be checking emails, Instagram, Facebook. Prob probably not a wise idea. Okay, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. I like that. By the way, I endorse the same thing. I actually share a lot in, uh, I've got a book in later 2020 coming out called Get Your Mind Right, but part of getting your yeah. mind right is getting your body right. There's nutrition, That's sleep, right. recovery, and I'm huge into the optimal recovery aspect, um, and nutrition obviously plays a huge role. That's why I wanted you on today to talk more about that. Um, and what about some of the other things like, okay, you talk about melatonin is important. Mm -hmm. uh, what about like, you know, you've heard like lavender, uh, aromatherapy, right. are there other things yeah. like that that you think are other beneficial aspects of that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there there's things like lavender that people can use. Um, one of the things that I, uh, I will probably go to first to be really conservative is I will just use something like glycine. Hmm. So glycine is an amino acid. Um, it tastes sort of sweet, but um, there's good research showing that glycine helps with the natural production of GABA. Hmm. And GABA basically helps basically calm the nervous system down. And so I've had a lot of people that have tried melatonin and all the other things, and we just use enough glycine, and it helps them to stay asleep and fall asleep. Hmm. There's also some interesting research where 
if people can't get the you re, you know you talked about oh is it the volume of sleep or is it the quality of sleep? And this particular study, they used glycine, and these guys were only able to get a certain amount of sleep, but yet they had less fatigue during the day. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. kind of a cool one because now, like sometimes I have athletes who have a newborn. There's nothing they can do to get more sleep. The right. Volume of sleep is just it's not going to happen. It's life. life, exactly, <laughs> right? You you know, it's beautiful, but it's 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 hard too, yep. right? You yep. and I both know that yep. with kids. And so that's where we can strategically use a nutrient. Like it's not the optimal way, but that's something we have to do because we need to get our guys to recover so that they can train the next mm-hmm. day or throw sure. or batting practice, whatever it is. Yep. So getting back to gut health, you, mm. you've, you've said before it all starts in the gut. I know it's become a in vogue term lately. Right. You've, 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 you have something called the 4R program. What is 4R? So 4R, it's not my program. I, I, it's, it's based off of functional medicine. Okay. So if you look at the Institute for Functional Medicine, um, it's what they've sort of established as a program for gut health. So the four R's, uh, the first R is remove. So remove can be anything from mm. removing an overgrowth of bacteria, yeast, parasite, you name it. Uh, removal could be removing food sensitivities, mm-hmm. right? So that could be that. Um, the, the second R is usually replace. Okay. And these things sometimes I go out of order. It doesn't have the exact order. But replace could be possibly replacing digestive enzymes. Okay. Um, it could be hydrochloric acid. That's a big problem with a lot of my older clients older athletes um and Is then older what does that mean so basically 60s 70s no i could be even in the 40s what yeah so basically what happens is <sighs> the more the more the older you, the older you get so after the age of 20 there's research showing that hydrochloric acid production de- decreases as hmm. we get older now you throw stress in the mix it drops even more so if you follow me on this hydrochloric acid, just mm-hmm. real quick in the digestive cascade of, of this is good. You know, this is good. Of gut, gut health and digestion, when you eat food, when you start thinking about food, like we think about the cookies, like your mouth waters, your brain starts thinking about food, your body starts dumping acid in your stomach. So that's a natural process. That's basically the stomach you can think of as a big cement mixer. It mixes mm-hmm. the water, the food, the <laughs> Feels acid. Feels like that right now. Right. It just like gets everything going. Right. As that mixture moves on it's called chyme it moves on to the small intestine when it goes to the small intestine there's receptors there that Hmm. trigger the release of enzymes into the small intestine from the pancreas but it won't happen unless the acid is there to begin with it has to be very acidic the acidity of your stomach's like battery acid it's like one to two Mm -hmm. so that's the thing is where that 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 is a major major part of the digestive process and so sometimes people don't produce enough of that okay remove replace yep remove replace um the third one will be it could be repair or repopulate so repair basically means that's when we get back to the leaky gut got it Okay? okay so leaky gut is the the major thing that we do need to repair over the long haul i think that's where people fall through the cracks so to speak and not recover from their gut problems got it um, and then the fourth one is repopulate, which basically Got basically it. means okay. good probiotics and things of that sort. So, if it, to improve gut health, what what should someone be doing or not doing? Mm. Food, like, are there foods one should be eating or not eating? Like, just hey, tell me what I need to do. Do this. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, I would say just from testing people over the last probably fifteen years, it's what I call the big six. Mm. So these are typically the the most commonly eaten foods that people test positive on food sensitivities. Okay. So the big six would be gluten. Second one's dairy. Third one is soy. The fourth one, legumes. Fifth one is going to be corn. And then the sixth one, eggs. Ooh. And eggs tends to... Ah, I tell a lot of my clients and athletes, it's like almost a top three all the time. What? And they're like, oh my gosh, you're telling... I can't eat eggs? And I go, yeah, just for right now. Now, sometimes when we, it's not forever for some people, but for, it might be a period of time where we may need to heal the gut. Okay. Because what you'll find is that those six foods are the most commonly eaten foods in their their diet. Hmm. And so because it's constantly being exposed because they have leaky gut, that's constantly irritating the immune system. Now, gluten-free, obviously, that's a huge thing now. It's, You hear it all the time. Oh, yeah. Would you say from your experience, how many people are, quote, allergic to gluten? Would you say 50% of the population, 20%, 80%? Because everything now is 
gluten free. Well, when we say we have to qualify what allergy means versus sensitivity, right? Like that's a big, big difference. Okay. So if you say allergy, when I when we say allergy, I mean it's Will Smith in the movie Hitch, <laughs> right? He eats the seafood and he's like, <laughs> his face blows up, right? He's sucking down Benadryl. We all see that. That's a straight up allergy, right? right? You have the kid who has EpiPen in his backpack just in case he comes in contact with a peanut. Like that is life threatening. That's not what we're talking about. Mm. Um, the way that your body works, you can think of it as your body has its own armed forces, right? So we have Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and so your body has a similar armed forces. I the the mm. allergy is what we call IgE as in Edison. That's okay. basically you can think of our our seals at Coronado, right? Yep. Like those guys, boom, they're there, take care of business, and they're out. Mm-hmm. And there's like six of them. Maybe eight of them, right? Small number. That's what IgE is. Two other branches of the immune system that's most abundant is what we call IgA as an apple and IgG as in Gary. So those parts, they sort of have a more delayed reaction. Hmm. So that's when someone has, let's say, they might have gluten and the next day they have sinus hmm. issues, you know, or they might have digestive issues. So the symptoms will vary from person to person, but... Um, you know, an allergy for gluten, they say one out of maybe 133 will have a allergy, allergy, allergy. Right. allergy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, which would be more celiac possibly. But um, this is if someone can't do testing. So if they're like, hey, man, I think I have definitely some kind of weird stuff going on, like food intolerances, food sensitivities, then I'd say try to go off the big six for like 60 days. 60 days, two months. Let's see how you do. Okay. Yeah. But wow. For me, I'd rather do the testing so I can see, okay, how severe is it and what yeah. parts of the By the way, that's not easy. To. No, that's not easy. You give up gluten, easy. dairy, soy, legumes, corn, and eggs. Right. I'm pretty much eating air. Yeah. Well, that's why for some people, this gets them out of it, but this is good in one way because it gets them out of the <laughs> comfort zone because they're so used to eating what they grew up eating as a kid. Yeah. So now they have to start Advent- being right. adventurous and eating something By else. By the way, is anyone else kind of mesmerized right now? Like, I'm listening to Robert, like, spit out <laughs> science, and I'm like, this guy knows his stuff. <laughs> like, man, I'm having... I hope y'all are enjoying this as much as I am, because I'm like, I'm still back to the gluten thing. I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta, I, I gotta tap into this. This is good. All right, let's, let's move on to the next one. Hormones. Yeah, hormones. Oh, this, That's this, this, we could talk one. about the whole, whole time hormones, but... That's right. Let's just talk hormones, and let's talk guys first. Yeah. I don't want to talk about the you know ladies and hormones yet. Yeah, it's all guys. Like, what are some things men can do to maximize their hormones? I would say sleep is a big one. Ooh, yeah. So when we're talking about testosterone. We're talking about especially growth hormone. Yep, that's a big one. Um, we know growth hormone is secreted mostly at night. Yep. Yeah, I mean, depending on your training program, your protocol, yeah, you can produce GH from your training session, but you produce a lot of it at night. And so that's why what especially males can do is try to limit the alcohol. Mm-hmm. Because when you drink alcohol, that depresses your growth hormone output. Mm-hmm. You decrease your growth hormone output, that means you are getting fatter mm. and less muscle. <laughs> So that's one of the key things that a guy can do um, for really modifying, um, optimizing the hormones, put it that way. So all our young guys right now are like, wait, so Robert's telling me to don't party and go to bed earlier. Pretty much. Good advice. But you and I, <laughs> right? I mean, you and I know, I mean, I always, I always ask my young guys, I go, hey, man, I mean, who wants to be an ordinary baseball player here? Amen. And they go, no, I want to make it to the majors. And I go, well, that's right. That means you got to be an extraordinary baseball player. You got to do the extra mm-hmm. ordinary things mm-hmm. to get there. Right. So yeah, there may be sacrifices that need to occur. So that's where maybe the young guys may get away with it, right? We know a lot of guys that in spite of what they eat and put in their bodies, they're still great. doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Mm-hmm. But then time catches up to them. Right. And then they're like, oh, hey, something's going on. Right. So yeah. sleep, sleep's imperative. Sleep is imperative for yep. those guys. And yeah. What about what about uh, any supplements that one should take for the guys to help like optimize, you know, growth hormone, testosterone, or even yeah. even IGF one? I would say one of the the I would say important things for males to do is to manage their stress. Mm. So if if to take herbs like such such as basically ashwagandha, 
uh, American ginseng, shishandra extract, like those are all been proven to have a very good um, effect on mo uh, modulating stress. Hmm. Um, and so if someone can do that, that's a very, very important for overall eventual testosterone production. And the reason why I say that is because the problem is even some of the older guys that go to the, the T clinic, right? Mm -hmm. And they go get tested. Okay, well, their testosterone low. So they they pump them full of testosterone and what happens their boobs get sensitive and they don't lose weight and they get puffy mm -hmm. what that tells me is that the testosterone that got injected just got converted into estrogen hmm. because they're having estrogen basic estrogenic effects hmm. from the testosterone so that's not the problem the problem is that they're so stressed out of their mind that their body can't produce testosterone yep. so yep. that's more the issue and Obviously, with stress, cortisol is through the roof. Cortisol is going to suppress all of correct. this, correct? So yeah. uh, it's modifying stress. Right. right. And get back to it. Right. That's why, obviously, working yeah. out, sleep, uh, changing lifestyle are, is all very, very important right. um, on that. There used to be this thing. Tell me what your thoughts are. If you have too much soy in your diet. Right, right, right. It's, it's, it's bad. So, guys, don't eat, like, edamame or soy-based. What, what, where are you at with that? Yeah, I... You know, I used to be anti-soy everything. I think if if a person gets a better quality soy, like if they do tempeh, miso, natto, like a fermented type of soy, it's much better. Mm. It's more, you know, they can assimil assimilate it. Um, I just was reading an article the other day for post-workout recovery. Mm -hmm. You know, they did whey protein. They did, I think they did some other protein. They did soy protein. And soy protein still had the guy recover. Okay. Um, but for me, if 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 I have someone come see me, I would automatically test their estrogen levels, and I would say, "Hey, look, man, your estrogen levels are high." And so sometimes some of the research does show that estrogen can raise, uh, can go up with soy consumption, and I think it's only like twenty-five to fifty grams. I can't remember the exact number in some of the research. And is that the case? Then are you looking at DHEA? Are you looking at? I'm looking at everything. Okay. Because then I want to know. Okay, well, if he's taking that or if he's, you know, they might be taking DHEA. Well, is it converting into estrogen? Mm. Because remember the day, the Anderson Dion days, right? Oh, yeah. With Mark yeah. McGuire and yeah. all the right, yeah. with Champion Nutrition. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, like, I mean, obviously we knew there was something else going on, but one of the problems, guys were taking, oh, I can take tons of Anderson Dion and I'm going to make testosterone. I'm going to gain like 20 pounds and increase my squat by 50 pounds. Mm. But then guys weren't having that effect. Mm. They were getting sore breasts and they were getting estrogenic effects because mm. you can't predict the conversion into testosterone. Okay. okay. So that's where we have to be careful. So for me, if I can, I will get some kind of collection out of a person so I can say, hey, man, okay, your estrogen levels are high, so we need to do some things to help get rid right. of this, get this down. Because if your estrogen levels are high, your body's not going to be able to produce the right amount of testosterone. So it, it, if I take the missus out for a date and I to mm. take her to sushi, I shouldn't be worried about having edamame because it's going to make me soft no i mean once <laughs> i think once a week is okay but if if it's your main source of protein that's that's where you got to be careful okay yeah let's talk about ladies yeah and hormones that's right hey guys i hope you're enjoying all this talk on hormones with robert yang before we talk women's hormones let's first hear from one of my sponsors All right, my friends, today's episode is powered by a tool that I rarely do a workout without. It's called MyZone. MyZone is a heart rate monitor that tracks your heart rate, your calories, your percentage of your max heart rate, and something called MEPS, which stands for your MyZone effort points. I want to know how hard are you working in the gym. And what's beautiful about MEPS is I can test if you're working as hard as my pro athletes or if uh, the grandma or the grandpa or the young kid is outworking you. Never get outworked because you always want to be the hardest worker in the room. The other aspect I love about MyZone is it's an app that gives you a great visual when you're doing your workouts. Based on how hard you're working, you're either in the gray zone, you're in the blue zone, green zone, yellow zone, or the red zone. I love the red zone. The harder you work, the more you get rewarded with your met points. That's why it's called My Zone. Heck, we even have a My Zone scoreboard at Fitness Quest 10, and I encourage all of our clients to wear their My Zone belts so we can monitor their workouts, and if they want to compete, they can compete a little bit also. Lastly, within the My Zone app, 
You can friend people and follow their workouts, send them messages, and even have contests. And I love to compete. Heck, I encourage all of our people to follow me and see my workouts on the MyZone app, and I'll follow you back also. My MyZone app name is TD10. Pick up a belt today at www.myzone.org. I know you're going to love it, and if you're like me, you're going to want to wear it in all of your workouts, and you're going to hate it when you forget it. Check it out today and get one. MyZone.org. Get in the zone. Get in my zone. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so, with, Ladies and hormones. Right. So ladies with hormones, obviously the difference between male and female is mm-hmm. obviously female has a menstrual cycle each month. Yep. So when we're talking, are we talking like older or going uh, more let's, menopausal? Let's talk menopause, po- okay. even perimenopause. Right. Um, you know, are, are there things that women can do to to help balance out their hormones? I mean, even yeah. at Fitness Quest 10, where, where we're recording this right now, we've got a lot of women in their 40s, 50s, right. and 60s who are trying to lose weight. Yep. They're trying to control, you know, they got a lot of different things on their plate. They've got a few kids. Mm-hmm. They've got a career. They're stressed out. Right. And they're perimenopausal or menopausal. Yep. yep. What would be a couple recommendations on that? Yeah, so that's always a, a difficult one. So if we go to more menopausal, so technically that would be a woman that has not had a period for over a year. Okay. Okay. Um, so with women not having a period for a year, then you're going, okay, well, what's going on with the adrenal glands? Because it should be like a baton race. Hmm. So as a woman is having a menstrual cycle every single month, and then as things start to slow down, mm. What ends up happening is the ovaries say, hey, adrenal glands, take the baton, and we need you to start producing a little bit of estrogen, a little bit of progesterone, because that's not going to happen with the ovary shutting down. Mm -hmm. But the adrenals, by that time, are so stressed out and tired that they don't have the capacity to do that. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is, it could be mental, emotional stress, it could be training for a half Ironman and they're just overtraining, whatever it is, but their stressors are too high, sort of the cortisol levels are either too high or too low, and now their body can't keep up with some of the production, and so now they have hot flashes or they gain weight or whatever hmm. the symptoms are. So at th- probably the, the most important thing is to really go down to, okay, how can they manage stress? Hmm. So from like an exercise perspective, I mean, we're here at Fitness Quest 10, so I would say, look, maybe – not do hit classes five days a week, but maybe three days a week you do hit class, but twice a week you you take a nice soft yoga Mm. and you focus on, okay, let's focus on breathing, getting some diaphragmatic breathing down, calming the system down, shifting your body more to a parasympathetic state, which is a more rest and digest state rather than Hmm. hammering, 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 go, 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 go. Yeah, so those are the things that we need to try to figure out. And, And it could go from a number of different ways. It could be, okay, I can do that with my exercise. And right. what if their sleep is horrible? Well, then we got to figure out their sleep because mm. if they're not sleeping well, we got to figure that whole thing out. Yeah. What about you said hot flashes? Mm-hmm. What if women are having hot flashes? Is there something they can do hormonally or yeah. supplement-wise to help manage hot flashes? I would say first priority is they have to stabilize their blood sugar because okay. what happens is when you don't stabilize blood sugar, if it goes too high, too low, that's when body temperature can be very, very dysregulated. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, I would say 50, 60% of the time, if a woman starts stabilizing their blood sugar, a lot of the hot flashes start going. Hmm. They go, oh, wow, they've decreased by 30, 40%, which is great hmm. without even having to take any medication or supplementation. So I, I would always say, look, remember your BFF for blood curl is PFF, protein, fats, and fiber. Mm-hmm. Do that because it will make a massive difference in terms of controlling blood sugar and then ultimately trickling and affecting the adrenal glands and helping to control the adrenal function and overflowing to affect their hormones. Hmm. Um, and then at that point, um, there is good research on rhubarb extract. Hmm. If you take that, that helps a tremendous amount to cut down on the hot flashes. But I would say focus on the base and foundational stuff first. Is all this going to be in your new book? I will be talking about that in probably my new book. I don't know how when, extensive. When is the new but, book coming out? Oh, man. Why are you going to ask that? Because this is your first time. To <laughs> like, no, I know. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm working on it. 2020? I'm, I'm going to try to get it out. In, in 2020? And, and probably, yeah, end of t- 2020. Okay. Yeah, I'm really going to Because this topic is it's amazing, and I, yeah. it's really, really impactful uh, in mm. the sense of there's a lot of men and women. I, it all yeah. comes down to hormones. 
Yeah. Right? Like I always say, you could train with me or any trainer around the world seven days a week, but if you don't eat right, you're not going to see the results. Right. You're going to be, you know, it does. You got to, you got to make sure what you put in your mouth is important. Was it, was it, uh, Hippocrates said, "Let thy let thy food be thy medicine, and thy medicine be thy That's food." Right. Everything that you eat, there's some kind of a chemical response that happens, um, and that chemical response is going to ultimately uh, uh, result in a hormonal response. So it comes right. down to hormones. We're hormonal beings, men and women, boys and girls. Yeah. Um, on that, so how do you get your hormones right? I say get your mind right. I should say get your hormones right. That's right. Get your hormones right. Uh, but it's like, how do you do that? I think it's a really important topic. And I think with a lot of your recommendations, how do we consolidate this into man? Like how would someone guy or gal find out where they're at? Like, would they get tested? Like, like, hey, man, I'm having all these symptoms. Is it go to someone right. like yourself, a naturopathic doctor? Uh, yeah. I mean, they can, you know, I work, like you said, I, I work with people all over the world, so they can yeah. contact me, uh, through our website, robberyinc.net. Hmm. Uh, we can get the testing process going. Obviously for me, I like to get history and health yeah, yeah. history paperwork because that's very important because there's a lot of information that, um, can tell me what's the driving cause. Cause yeah. I want to get to the, the root cause of the problem. I don't want to just band-aid something and, and get you better for two months and then for things to start coming back. Yeah. So, Robert, when I told my family yesterday that I was mm-hmm. going to be speaking to you today about the podcast, they were fired up because, you know, they don't want to hear from dad. Love it. They don't, hear, it. They don't hear from dad. <laughs> that doesn't know anything. So they want to hear, they want to hear from the, the That's right. Dad just works he, with like half the <laughs> NFL and the MLB, <laughs> but he doesn't know anything. They're like, let's get it. So they're like, dad, I got to, uh, I'm like, all right, what's your questions? So I wrote down some questions all from right. each of the kids and Melanie. All Melanie right. was, I think, the most fired up. Like, oh, I love right, Robert. Cool. Oh, my gosh. Right? So uh, first one comes from Luke. He's 17. Right. Okay. And you, and you have what? 17 to 15-year-old? I got a 16 and a 15-year-old. Okay. So yeah. we're, we're about yeah, the same similar, age. Similar, yeah. So, so my son Luke, he, I, I didn't quite understand the question. Maybe you will. All he right. says, Dad, is it more important to eat great, healthy food or not any junk food? I'm like, oh. <laughs> so he wants to know. Should, yeah, yeah. What's more important, like to eat really healthy food or don't eat junk food? What yeah. would be your answer? I, that's a great question. Really? Because some people say, well, I'm just going to eat a little little bit of like junk food, right? Yeah. And, or, but I, when I, whenever it makes me think of whenever I'm trying to get someone to change their lifestyle with their food, I always want them to put in the good stuff first. So quick story. Mm. So I had this young, young mm. basketball player. I mean, he was probably like 6'1", 125 pounds, soaking wet, like just a rail. And he come, his mom wanted me, see me to see me, so we're doing his program. I'm like, hey, man, go drink some water. I, I mean, just to, to save on cups and so forth, I had like seven-ounce cups in my, in my studio. And he literally, he literally take a tiny little sip of the seven-ounce cup, and he would, he would just choke down the little bit of water like it was like battery acid or something. Hmm. I was like, what's wrong? He goes, oh, I don't like water. I go, what are you talking about? Oh, I just can't drink water. Hmm. And I'm like, what do you drink? Gatorade and soda. Hmm. That's all you drink all day? Yeah. I go, okay, well, that's common. So my, my viewpoint was, okay, I don't care how much soda you drink, how much Gatorade, just get your water up to half your body weight ounces. Mm-hmm. So once I did that, he, he didn't drink soda. He didn't grate it. So my point is when you put in the good stuff, yep. all the taste for something mm. with sweetness or bubbles or whatever, it dissipates. Okay. So I would rather someone really eat the good healthy stuff. And if they have some junk food, especially with kids, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you just put in the good stuff and then, yeah, they're going to have some bad stuff. So I told him each one question, but Luke insisted he had another one. Oh, okay. He said, I take whey protein after my workouts. Is this good for recovery? <laughs> <laughs> Good man. It is probably the protein that's most studied, right? After yep. uh, for post workout, um, I would say because what he trains what four times a week, five times a week, at least, right? At least, exactly. That's my point. I would say try to get him to rotate. Mm. So I I can recommend like a beef protein he can use one day, mm. a whey protein a second day, okay. and then maybe go plant based a third day. Okay. The problem is that people tend to eat the same type of food all the time and then they develop a food sensitivity. Yep. So then he starts getting farts and gas and he's like, ah, oh, my stomach doesn't feel so good anymore. And that's very, very common with a lot of athletes. Does whey, af- does that affect acne and skin health? It can. Okay. So that's why I find with dairy. some of the young. Yeah, dairy is, that's probably the one mm. that I would probably take out 
without doing any testing, especially with my young players so like coming teens. up. Teens, yeah. acne, skin Dairy. issues, eczema, atomic dermatitis, okay. anything like that. Yeah. Okay. So my son Brady, mm-hmm. he's fourteen. All right. Uh, and he asked a, a, a very similar question. He said, "Is it better to eat clean and more food, or less food?" That's not as clean. Because <laughs> these kids are eating me out of the house right now. So uh, I, I, I hear you. Is it better to eat clean and more food? Sorry, Todd. You're going to have to just work more. Or less more. food that's not as clean. You're going to have to work more, bud. <laughs> oh, man. You're going to have to just provide that good, healthy, clean man, food. You're killing me, Brady. You're, you're killing gonna, me. You're going to have to just eat less protein. That's all. <laughs> you're going to save it for the little ones. <laughs> and then, of course, he had the pipe in. He said, ask Robert, is creatine safe for high school kids? It's safe. It's safe. It, it's kind of been blown out of proportion. I mean, you you asked lit lifters back in the day, what was your creatine? Red meat was your creatine. Right. So if you eat red meat, you're going to get creatine. Okay. So, and is there a certain dosage you'd recommend? You know, they always have a a mega dosing in the beginning. You you, you up for that or or no? Uh, I think a consistent dose. If you just go probably. 15 grams a day is fine, actually. Wow. Yeah. The, the key thing, though, is if you, when 15. you're doing it, yeah, you could do that. But obviously, if there's loose stool diarrhea, then you can't do that. But okay. the key thing is you got to drink water. Yeah, yeah. So for every five grams, you got to drink at least eight to 10 ounces of water. And is there a form of creatine with salt. you'd recommend? The micro ionized? No, or- just creatine monohydrate. Okay, really? Okay. If you just, right. if you just, basically, if you take creatine monohydrate and like, that's my The expert has spoken, kids. <laughs> Man. So just that's most of the research, but you can go just kind of maintenance dose and keep it pretty Good. high for consistent. Hey, Zach, can you mark that tape for all you parents listening right now? Because I get that question all the time yeah. from parents, yeah. right? The expert has spoken. Robert Yang has said yes. But what you but what I noticed though is is the guys that tend to eat more protein, mm. they tend to get less of effect. Because they're already getting in yeah. the protein, right? Yeah. So that's the thing. Good point. Yeah. Let's go to my little sweetheart, McKenna. Ah, my little McKenna. daddy's girl. She's 11. <laughs> she, Dad, can you ask Robert, how many vegetables should I eat in a day? Oh, I'm like, really, McKenna? She wants to know. Like, she you know, doesn't love vegetables. Yeah. But, you know, how many should she eat in a day? I think a good target for kids, obviously, definitely a good salad or broccoli cauliflower that kind of thing at dinner and if you can try to squeeze it in like some salad or or lettuce on their sandwich and then in the morning like what we do in our house is we do fried rice so Mm. basically we take leftover meat which angie is awesome at because she always has anywhere from four to five pounds of meat in our refrigerator so it's just cooked up and we just either chop it up might be ground turkey ground beef throw that in the pan and then we have a steam cooker rice cooker right so Put that in there, and then leftover veggies, just chop it up, and then right there you got fried rice. Because sometimes for us, because my boys compete in surfing, on the weekends, I mean, we're, we got to be out the door sometimes at 5, 4.30 in the morning. Mm. So they got to be eating in the truck and get ready for the heat if they're at 6.30 in the morning or 7. So I'm like, okay, let's get the food going, get them, you know, fueled up properly, and that's so probably you, easy So you believe in eating meat, not just plant-based? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Man. But you got to eat the veggies. That's the thing. <laughs> People just take one thing and say, well, that's bad. Well, you can't do that. We eat all types of things. So if you eat enough veggies, that's the whole point. You got to eat more veggies. And that's, I think, primarily why there's such a big push and people are going, oh, I feel so much better plant-based. Well, it's the first time they've eaten more vegetables. And are there is there a hierarchy of fruits or vegetables that you'd say, hey, here's the top five. Like, got to have blueberries first. Or I would, yeah, that's a great question. So for me, when I say, for example, PFF, protein, fats, and fiber, mm. the fiber part of it, I would always say veggies first if you can. Okay. Because obviously the diff- biggest difference between veggies and fruit is fruit has sugar. So it's always easy to overdo the, the, the fruit. Okay. So I would try to go with, um, I'm really high on if you can, cruciferous vegetables. Uh, because cruciferous vegetables, obviously you get the fiber, but yep. you also get things like indole-3-carbonyl and uh, dianomethane. Basically, these are things that help detoxify the body. Mm. And you know, like you cook broccoli and you steam it and you open the lid and it smells sulfur, right? right? Sulfur, sulfur is very, very important for the production of glutathione. Glutathione is the master antioxidant Absolutely. of the body. So if yeah. that's why if you eat the vegetables... It helps you detoxify on a daily basis. Hmm. You don't need to do a massive detox every single you know year. I mean, you could do that, which will benefit you, but you want to try detox every day because hmm. we're we're constantly bombarded by toxins all the time. Yep. 
Yeah. So that would be my biggest thing. And then like with the fruits, I would say there was a hierarchy. Go with your blueberries, go with your berries first. Um, and then, you know, from there, go with the tropical fruits. They tend to be, you know, more sugar, you know, and use those maybe post-exercise, right? So spinach, kale, broccoli, yeah, blueberries, exactly. blackberries, these are at the top of the food chain. Top of the food chain, exactly, Man. exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then let me go to my bride, uh-huh. Melanie. She said milk, good or bad? Ah, depends. That's Whoa. a huge topic. I mean, seriously, I, I've I've done. I, I debated with her about what you're going to say. I'm like, I've done two hour lectures on that. Wow. So the thing is that see with dairy, if you had to answer her, one answer, it's probably the most allergenic protein we can consume. That's what she, as humans. She, 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 I said it's good. So She's like, no, she cut us out two years ago. <laughs> she cut us out of milk. <laughs> she like, she cut us out. Pure just. Dark. You just got cut. Cut. All almond milk, which, by the way, I love almond milk. Yeah, I'm a big fan of almond milk. Yeah. But she, she. The reason does, why I say it depends is because then we're also looking at okay, are you talking about raw, pasteurized? Mm. You're looking at raw, pasteurized, homogenized. Then you're looking at now you got A1, A2 milks, and, and things of that sort. So that's that's where for she, me yeah. it it sort of depends because my 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 oldest has been drinking raw milk since he's one. Raw milk. Raw milk. Yeah. Wow. He's the one out of my two that can digest dairy fairly well huh. um, i can't do dairy okay yeah so that's where but i would say like overall quick statement i would say it's probably the most allergenic protein that we can probably consume yeah yeah that's what she said so i, I knew it i knew it See? all right that's that's that was right that, that's good <laughs> and, and, and then I have a question. I, I had the three kids in Mel. My question, yeah. although I've asked a lot, you know I always say about get your mind right. That's right. What are some foods to help keep focus and clarity throughout the day? Mm. Like sometimes I get a little brain fog. Like, you know, yeah. it's like, like I got I, I have pockets, what I call to get in my genius zone. Right. There's times of the day when I feel my best, when I do mm. my best work. By the yeah. way, it's why one of the reasons why right now I'm doing this pocket at this time. Like there are pockets when I feel my best clarity. It typically comes after a workout when I'm eating the right foods. Mm. Um, uh, how do you avoid brain fog? Are there foods you'd recommend to say, hey, this is going to help your brain mm. this is going to help get your mind right. Yeah. I would say first off the bat is protein. Mm. You know, the protein, you greet me, proteus is of first importance. So when we're talking about brain health, we're talking about neurotransmitters and dopamine, etc. Mm-hmm. Remember, you need the raw ingredient. You need amino acids to produce your neurotransmitters. So that's why protein is so important for people that need to mentally focus and concentrate. And then, you know, I got to bring it in. Your BFF for blood sugar control <laughs> is PFF, <laughs> P, protein, right? But then you got the fat and you got the fiber, which helps to stabilize your blood sugar. Mm-hmm. So that's the key thing. We don't want your blood sugar to go up and down. That's where people feel, oh, I feel anxious or I feel down or I feel my energy is low and then it feels high. We don't want that. We want you to be even keel. Then you can be, have that genius moment or the creative moment mm. so that you don't have the brain fog. So that's what's really key. Now, you don't, I mean, if you're an athlete, you train twice a day, well, then we want to boost in some carbohydrates in there for recovery, yep. right? Like, for me, it's activity dependent. Yeah. So the more active someone is, and the more probably the most, uh, they're going to have more carbohydrates than a, a guy who's sitting at a desk for eight hours a day. Man, Robert. I want to thank you for just dropping the nuggets today uh, on, on all aspects, hormones, gut health, sugar, coffee. We talk, <laughs> we talk, we could probably talk another two hours, but uh, I know you're a busy man as well. And I just want to thank you for being here today and uh, imparting your wisdom. Absolutely. Uh, on everything. If someone wants more information about you, how they can follow you, because I know you're dropping great content all the time on your social media, where would be the best place they can contact you or follow you? They can uh, follow me, IG, uh, Robert Yang, uh, Facebook, Robert Yang, Inc., Twitter, Robert Yang, Inc., as well as Robert Yang on uh, LinkedIn. Okay. Um, website, if you want to just look at what we offer for services, robertyang.net. If you go to .com, you're going to get a Korean comedian. So, a Korean <laughs> it's a ro- comedian. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. looking at that domain a long time ago, but go to robertyang.net, and that's probably a good way to reach me too. Okay. And, and you and your wife, aren't you guys doing like cooking shows? I see sometimes you're in the kitchen. And, nah, she's and, she's and, the master chef, man. So she gets in there and, and 
spits out her recipes, which are awesome. So we're going to do more of that for sure. Folks, follow Robert Yang, um, uh, uh, just a great, great man who has an immense knowledge about nutrition. And, and I'd call it just uh, prolific wisdom about not just nutrition, but overall vitality, energy, and health. So you're going to want to follow him. Robert, I have a final question, Robert. If someone wants to improve their nutrition and they heard all this it's like oh my gosh this guy is so smart and i want to do this this and this and this right. but it sounds like i got to take like 15 different things i got to overhaul my nutrition where would be a great place to start like would be there one or two recommendations you say yeah. hey do this and you're going to right. be healthier yeah two things mm-hmm. first thing drink half your body weight ounces of water a day okay. i've seen that change a person's life more than anything joint health to not having coffee, having great energy. I mean, not drinking coffee and well, no, no, no. I'm just saying a person who's addicted to coffee and then they're, they're drinking the right amount of water and going, Holy cow. I don't drink four cups of coffee a day. I just need one and I'm good. Mm. Like I can think I don't have brain fog. I mean, et cetera. I mean, get that water up. It, you got to get the water up. Your brain's made of 70, 80% water. You know, your joints, your, you know, the disc between your spine, permanent coats of water. So Amen. you got to get enough water in there. And then the second thing is that eat a PFF breakfast. Mm. If you do that, that will make a massive difference. There's what we call in research a second meal phenomenon. So if you eat the proper breakfast in the morning, that gives you glucose control after lunch. So that's why for me, when like if I'm going to cheat and I'm going to have whatever pie or I'm going to have whatever at night, I will always eat a perfect breakfast. So what's the, an example of a good PFF breakfast? A good PFF breakfast, I would say like easy one for me, I would do leftover ground meat, probably leftover broccoli. And then if I want to wrap or something, I might put it in like a, a high fiber paleo wrap, something like that. Hmm. Because then I'm getting, you know, protein, fats from the meat. I'm getting fiber from the broccoli and getting extra fiber from the wrap. Okay. Yeah. So if I have oatmeal with nuts and berries, yeah, three eggs mm-hmm. with ketchup and a smiley face, four <laughs> or five days a week. <laughs> no, I'm. Is that a good breakfast? You need to switch it up. What? Yeah. So one day, don't have the eggs. Have if Melanie, you guys did whole chicken. Have a have a chicken thigh for breakfast. Really? It's only in America where it's. Bacon, eggs, toast, cereal, oatmeal. Even if I like, I love breakfast. I know, but then have different types of proteins. That way you give your body a variety of different types of proteins. If I put the smiley face in a not smiley face with the ketchup, would that work? Or it could, it could possibly thing? work, but you just take the eggs out put the thighs in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try that. And uh, hey, would you be willing to come back for another episode? Because this was Absolutely, awesome. Absolutely, man. I had a blast. Well, you were awesome, Robert. Thank you so much. And folks, as you know, you could train seven days a week. If you don't train, your, you know, you don't change your nutrition, you don't improve your nutrition, you have five, six, seven times a day where you uh, could mess up or you could do the right, right thing. And what Robert just imparted in all of us was some great wisdom on how you can improve uh, your own health, vitality, energy, um, So, Robert, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming in today and uh, talking all things nutrition. Hey, guys, thanks for sticking around a few extra minutes. By the way, I'm just sipping on a coffee now as uh, Robert Yang gave me the thumbs up on this coffee thing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode as much as I enjoyed having Robert Yang in the house He was dropping some awesome content information, uh, everything on gut health, hormones, sugar, and some great uh, questions that came in from you. So, hey, I would really appreciate if you enjoyed that episode, if you could help me out. If you could, uh, number one, give us a five-star rating on iTunes. Please write us a review. And any questions or comments you have on this uh, topic today on nutrition, if you want to see more topics on nutrition, let me know. Uh, You could share this episode as well on your social media, uh, in your newsletters, and uh, pass it on to your colleagues and friends because that really helps us spread the gospel of motivation and inspiration. So uh, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for being a fire-breathing dragon, mind right maniac. And remember, every single thing that you put in your mouth, it counts. So Robert Yang, thank you so much. Make sure you uh, give us some feedback on that. I want to hear all those great comments. Without further ado, remember, train hard, eat right, and live inspired. Until next time, remember, create impact.